This week's flash felt more like an appetizer than a main course, leaving me really excited for what's to come, but still hungry at the end. <laughs> what's up, guys? Eric here, and welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to discuss The Flash, Season 3, episode titled Abracadabra. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned. Let's get into it. So hold on to your seat, guys. This week, we were teased a big reveal in all the promos and trailers. Abracadabra from the 64th century was going to tell us who Savitar is, or at the very least, give us a hint. Or maybe at the end, we get a cool scene with Savitar taking off his armor, leaving us excited at the prospect of getting a step closer to the identity of the God of Speed. And nope, <laughs> I don't know if I'm let down because this episode was slackly lacking or the fact that they hyped it up so much and then did not deliver. So look guys, this week's episode was just okay. I mean, Abracadabra wasn't this deep character. He wasn't a tortured soul, hell bent on revenge type of villain. Matter of fact, I don't think he had any intention of doing anything to Team Flash at the start. He simply wanted to go home. And of course, to most of us eagle-eyed viewers, you probably picked up on this at the same time I did. Like right at the beginning when he was hitting the labs and stealing components, I was like, he's trying to go home, obviously. Uh, he's from the 64th century. There would only be one logical reason why he would be stealing tech from our time period. This was a no-brainer. Uh, the only problem is he committed a bunch of crimes on Earth-19 and actually killed the partner of Gypsy, so her desire to capture Abracadabra was more personal than anything else. And speaking of Gypsy, this week she was driven by emotions to bring Abra to justice because of the death of her partner, and we found out her boyfriend as well. Uh, Cisco pushed the issue because he felt something between himself and Gypsy, but she was very distant this week, and something felt a little bit off. Uh, I think he picked up on it as well. Uh, she was reluctantly helping Team Flash because she couldn't capture Abracadabra by herself. Honestly, I'm interested more and more about Earth-19. She even mentions to Cisco they don't have the same type of technology that we have on Earth-1. And so Cisco was like, hey, I want to go over and help you rig something up. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see that happen, but I think it would be pretty cool. Uh, Cisco also has second thoughts after Gypsy gets all savage on Joe West because of his interactions with Abra while locked in the pipeline and about the pipeline. So Abra is captured by Team Flash initially by using what looks to be a regular pair of handcuffs or their meta handcuffs. You know, I didn't think these would work on him because even if they were some kind of metahuman handcuffs, it shouldn't have affected Abra and neutralized his powers because he's not a metahuman. Matter of fact, the pipeline shouldn't have stopped his powers either. I will say this, Abra had some extremely impressive powers from what we saw throughout the episode, and Gypsy does let Team Flash in on his secret. He has nanotech in his system that allows him to do all kinds of amazing things that look like magic to people like us who work with primitive technology compared to his technology. So what can he do? What do we see him do? Well, he can teleport, he can use telekinesis, he can make water appear out of thin air, which again makes me question how he got captured by handcuffs and then were, you know, he was held in the pipeline. Uh, but while incarcerated, he tells the team that he has info on Savitar. He knows who he is. He knows how to stop him. Like he's basically grooming them into letting him go in exchange for this very important information. Uh, this could be their key to saving Iris, but no matter how much uh, of the team wants to do this, Iris doesn't want to do it. She feels that Abra needs to be taken back to Earth-19 and stay in trial. Several times in the episode, we hear the name The Collector, who I assume is in charge of criminals from Earth-19. Now, The Collector is a minor character from DC Comics who faces off against Batman and Gotham-related characters, but I don't think that's the version that we'll have here on TV. It could be just a generic name for the judges on Earth-19, not sure. I mean, I get the feeling that he may be in charge of the metahumans on Earth-19 and has a facility similar to Star Labs where he keeps evil metahumans locked away. But in this case, Abra isn't a metahuman, but certainly has powers like that of a metahuman. Let's jump back to Joe West real quick. So Joe West, of course, wanting to save Iris, makes the call to confront Abra, asking him about information on Savitar. And this allows Abra to escape into Star Labs, which is why he was there in the first place. Uh, for some reason, Eobard left a power cell there in his secret time room. This is the one component that Abra needed to finish a time ship so he could escape. Um, here's where we get this amazing group fight scene with Flash, Kid Flash, Cisco, and Gypsy facing off against Abracadabra in Central City. Uh, although this episode did have a little bit, you know, the, the CGI was really wonky in some scenes, 
I did enjoy the fight scene at the end. And for a moment, I thought that Flash, like at the end when we see him trying to go through the portal, Abra trying to go through the portal, I thought Flash was going to jump through the portal, chasing Abra into the 64th century. But instead, he phases into the time ship and phases out of the time ship with Abra once again capturing him for a second time. Uh, but this time he actually turns him over to Gypsy once and for all. And at the end, Barry tries to bend Abra by appealing to his humanity, but it seems that Abra, like many of the rogues from the future, doesn't care about the Flash in the least. Like he's extremely cold to the Flash. They also mention, or many of them have mentioned how different he is in the past. He's clearly different from the one they've encountered. So clearly this version of the Flash, our Barry Allen, doesn't have the confidence or the attitude of his future self just yet. Um, this is pretty much all we got in terms of info from Abra on Savitar, which is like none. I mean, I kind of hate the fact that the trailer for this episode and the showrunners tease this episode as being so important to Savitar. I mean, Barry does decide he needs to run to the future to get information he needs. Uh, but I said this months ago. I said, why doesn't Barry just run ahead and find out what he needs to know? Uh, it just seems silly. It took this event to make him think of that when Barry and Team Flash is much smarter than this. So I'm not sure why it took them so long to come to this conclusion. I mean, this was the catalyst for this, but it was an indirect catalyst. I, I really think Barry should have thought about that before. So I think this was kind of like an unnecessary uh, situation. The good news is we will see the future uh, in the next episode, and it looks to be very cool. I'll talk about the trailer uh, in my rant and preview. So let's talk about Caitlin and Julian for a moment and this big reveal at the end that wasn't such a big reveal, if you ask me. So something that we've known for weeks now is that Killer Frost would be coming back. It isn't a big secret. It's not something unexpected. I mean, we've known about this, and there's even a reference in this episode how her powers could help the situation. Okay, let's go ahead and start there. Let's talk about the situation. So Caitlin is hit with shrapnel when the team faces off against Abracadabra in Star Labs. And because they're worried that the police would know right away that she's Killer Frost, they don't want to take her to the hospital. So one thing I'm curious about is um, she's using a power damning device. So how would they know? Um, and do they test all life-threatening injuries with some rigorous metahuman test before treating them in the hospital? I just found this really strange. But anyway, they decided to operate her uh, there in Star Labs using Julian as the doctor while Caitlin stays awake during the surgery and guides him. And they say if she uses her powers, it would heal the wound because her powers accelerate her healing. But she doesn't want to do that because it may turn her into Killer Frost, sort of alluding to it. Surprisingly, they managed to save her with the surgery, but then she has a blood clot or so. Uh, I mean, something happens. We think it's a blood clot. We don't know. She ends up being killed at the end while on the recovery bed, like complete flatline. They try to bring her back. Nothing works. So Julia removes the dampening chain and she suddenly comes back to life as Killer Frost. And this was probably the least shocking cliffhanger we've had all season. It might have been the least, least shocking cliffhanger we've had since the beginning of the Flash series. So she comes back from the dead, uh, so to speak, and now we have Killer Frost. And I can't wait for the the line we're going to get, Caitlin is dead, and the irony there, because I mean, it's like, yeah, she, she died and Killer Frost came back. We get it. Um, sorry, guys. You know, I'm happy to see Killer Frost back because I love the TV version of this character, but this cliffhanger was just meh like no surprise no nail biting you know i'm excited about seeing barry head to the 64th century but something you know we could add something like having him run into the future and giving us a shot of central city uh in the future that would have been a bigger and better cliffhanger in my opinion I, I don't know this caitlin thing didn't really shock me that much so overall it was just a slightly above average episode i wanted it to be much more than it was but i don't know if i should blame the episode itself or the hype surrounding the episode. So I'm going to give this week a 7 out of 10. That's a, being a little generous. I kind of feel like I should be going a little bit lower. I hate to score it that low anyway. But between the lackluster Abracadabra being just this shallow villain. With no depth really. And the constant fake outs about Savitar reveals. It was a letdown. I mean we even had this corny Savitar is. And then of course you know Gypsy shows up and scares him all. It was just it, it was really bad right. Um, in a, you know, in the sense of getting me hyped for the next episode, it did that it did, but it suffers from a lot of the setup movies and TV show problems they have where they work so hard on the setup for the payoff episode that they forget to make this episode itself stand out. So it was like, this could have been like the, the prelude to 
the episode. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Were you let down at all like I was, or am I just being a party pooper here? Um, again, it was just an average episode or slightly above average episode, but I'm curious to what you guys think. Um, did you catch anything that you want to talk about in the comments? Uh, let me know down below. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week, and I will catch you later.